Hello and welcome to another edition of For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest, well, one of my guests today is Mary Beth Kayser. She's the owner of Horizon Wings. And our third guest is Sprite. And there is Sprite right there. First of all, Mary Beth, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For those who uh, may not be familiar with uh, Horizon Wings, tell us about it. Horizon Wings is a nonprofit facility in Ashford, Connecticut that specializes in the rehabilitation of birds of prey and actually a twofold organization because the other half of what we do is some of these birds are not releasable. Uh, some stay with us, go to other nature centers, and become educational ambassadors. How did, uh, how did Horizon Wings specifically come about in the first place? Well, I started being uh, or doing rehab about 30 years ago. My dog brought me a squirrel. Oh. And I got the state license and I went through that for many years but really was interested in the birds of prey. So about 15 or so years ago, I applied for a federal permit to be able to rehab the wild birds and then just wanted to do education and teach people about these magnificent creatures and our environment and ways we can protect them. So hopefully my grandkids and your grandkids will be able to see these birds in the wild. Yeah, absolutely. So how long has Horizon Wings been in existence for? Since 2001. Okay. Now, you were also a, a veterinarian tech uh, at some point, correct? Yes. So you've really been involved with the care of animals in some capacity or, or another for a very long time. Oh, most of my life. Yeah. I so. dragged home whatever my mother let me drag home when I was a child to take care of. Is that right? Like, what? Yes. Do you remember what the first thing was, the very first thing was? Oh, uh, Probably what? a bird, right, maybe? It was. It yeah. was a red-winged blackbird mm -hmm. who we found by the side of the road. And once he was well enough, my mom encouraged me to let him go. At that point, being a child, I sort of fell in love and wanted to keep him. And she was really the first one who taught me that. Wild creatures belong in the wild whenever possible. Right, and don't necessarily try to make them a pet because they're wild for a reason, right? Right, and even though these birds are all trained to come out on glove with us, they still maintain their wild ways. Right. If we were to be too intrusive with them, they would not think twice to use their talons or beak and let us know that. Right. Back so off. you'll get no problem from me today, Sprite. <laughs> yeah. You got that? Tell us about Sprite a little bit. Sprite is a northern sawwet owl. She's two years old. Very tiny, but she's full grown, though, right? She is full grown. This is as big as she'll get. She weighs about what a candy bar would weigh, about three and a half ounces. She came to us after first being with another rehabilitator after she struck a car in December of 2012. She flew right into the window of the car. The gentleman knew he hit a little bird. He went up the street to turn around, came to come back and get her, and another car came along and passed right over the top of her. Wow. And it sent her tumbling down oh, the road. Boy. So she uh, sustained some pretty severe neurological injuries that still impact her today. And but that initial driver, he, he took her and, and, and tried to get help for her, right? Right. Right, he did. He uh, picked her up. The woman he first contacted was uh, in East Win East Hartford, rather, right next door to South Windsor. And then she transferred her to me when the bird was deemed unreleasable because of her neurological uh, deficits. Uh, we were talking off the air. Um, one of the biggest reasons for the, the, the need for bird rehabilitation is car hits, correct? Yes. Uh, just because it, it's su such a uh, predominant thing that, that happens to them. Talk about that a little bit. Well, these birds are opportunistic and it's easier to pick up that dead rodent on the side of the road than to chase it through the woods for one reason. Two, people throw litter around the highway. Birds swoop down low to grab it off the side if there's you know something that looks good to eat or if there's a mouse sitting on that litter. But their eyes are different than ours. They really, they don't have the peripheral vision or side vision that you and I have. And they, most of the time, don't even see that car coming. And they're focused on whatever prey item they're watching and they quite often fly right into those vehicles. Is this something that happens at night or in the daytime? It can happen both. Uh, we get a lot of owls. They tend to fly slow and low. So many owls are struck by cars and the daytime birds, the hawks and such, again, the young birds quite often don't realize the dangers. If 
a bird has made it through its first year of life, that's pretty good, about uh, two-thirds of them don't. And that's because of the dangers out there. So we have a bird in who's blind in one eye because he was rising off of the highway, but not fast enough and went right into an oncoming car. So a lot of the perils that, that, that uh, this wildlife faces is, is human-related a lot of times, right? Much of it, yeah. much of it. Um, rat poison is a really big um, problem. Problem, yeah. yes. The, people poison the rats. It's much easier to sprinkle down that stuff than actually use a trap. It's not as messy, but what happens is these mice, it takes two or three days to die. They crawl out into the environment. Birds eat them bring, or bring them back and feed their young. And their second generation uh, rat poisons now are very, very lethal. It'll only take one mouse to kill a bird. And they slowly bleed to death internally because it's an anticoagulant. Yeah. So. Um, Sprite uh, is, uh, her main meals are little field mice, right? Because she's a small owl, so right. I mean, those, that's probably her food. Yeah, little woodland mice, maybe some insects, but she can take birds as large as a cardinal. Wow, that's like so. a, the, the same size as her almost. Maybe yeah. not as wide, but bigger maybe, yeah. and just the length. Very impressive, as I was saying. Um, they have zygdactyl toes. They fly with three in front and one in back, but when they go to grab something or perch, they'll switch a toe around and have two in front and two in back, and that enhances their grip. In fact, one of the meanings of the word raptor is to grab or to seize. Right. So are owls uh, uh, predominantly carnivores? Do they eat vegetation at all or no? Usually it's just wow. just meat. Wow. They're, they're hunters. Yeah. Um, one of the uh, characteristics of a raptor, be it a hawk, an owl, or a falcon, is that their eyes face forward because they're hunters. So they want you to be able to see what they're pursuing. So Sprite, uh, being rehabilitated, she's not someone that can be returned to the wild, correct? Right. And she has flight now, but because she was tumbled along the road and there was sand and there was salt down there, it abraded her eyes and she's got some deep scarring in her eyes. We think she may have some hearing deficit. Owls hunt by their sense of hearing. Right, that's like sonar in a way, right? Sort of, yeah. yes. Their face is shaped like a satellite dish you can see that's drawn the sound. And we don't know for sure that she can really hear well enough. We know she has some hearing, but we're not positive that it's well enough to hunt. Is she, um, does she socialize with any other owls or any, anybody else at your facility? She does have another saw wet in with her okay. that was also struck by a car uh, the same winter and that bird has a wing injury preventing it from its release. Obviously the goal is when you're rehabbing birds to try to release them back into the wild if possible right. and if yeah. not sometimes uh, the birds that remain with you can become I guess you would kind of call them educational birds. Right. We call them educational ambassadors and they travel around to all sorts of different groups. We've gone to nursing homes and senior centers, libraries, birthday parties. TV shows. TV yeah. shows, yes. Yeah. I mean, school scout groups. And uh, we travel not only through Connecticut, but we've gone into New York, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island. How many How many people have seen Sprite so far then? Oh, thousands. Yeah, is that right? Do you have to, does it take a little while to kind of determine a particular bird's temperament to decide if they would be appropriate to kind of be out in the public, be out of their cage or you know, it be does. around other people. It, it certainly does. Every time does. I bring my hands up, she's keeping an eye on. Yeah, she says, what yeah. is that person doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it does. Not all birds will make a good program bird. The younger you get them, obviously, the better that they are going to adapt. And she was pretty young when she came in, wasn't quite a year. Sawwets usually make pretty good program birds because they're very curious little birds. Glad to, they want to see everything that's going on, wonder yeah. what's going on. I have heard stories of hunters being followed by these little birds just because they're curious. They're just following them to see what they're going to do. Maybe they can get it, get it in on the action, mm. the prey or whatever, <laughs> you know? Uh, these uh, birds do like living deep in the woods. They're cavity dwellers. They nest in old woodpecker holes. Now, she's, so. since she's at your facility, you, do you, you have to feed her yourself, right? Right. They're, all the birds there are fed dead items every okay. day. Not fair to them. Most of them have some type of handicap. So it's not fair to ask them to hunt, right. nor is it fair to put that animal that's probably not going to have much of a chance to get away yeah. into a cage. So all of them are fed dead prey. Uh, you know, 
Talk about some of the other uh, birds of prey that you have besides uh, Sprite and the owls. You mentioned hawks and things like that. Yes, we have uh, three different types of hawks. We have a red-shouldered hawk, a broad wing. We have two red tails. Whenever possible for avian enrichment, we like to put another bird of its own kind in. Uh, we have a bald eagle who just started doing programs, ATCA. We have oh, a... That's a big bird. He yeah. is a big bird. We have turkey vulture and a black vulture, and we have other owls besides Sprite and a peregrine falcon. Are all those birds that you mentioned, are they native to this area? Um, all of them, yes. Actually, okay. I'm looking. Yes, they are all native to this area. Okay, uh, which makes sense. Now, are, uh, some of them obviously are being rehabilitated and maybe can release, but others are permanent residents of the facility, right? Right. We have a few birds in rehab right now. Uh, we do take the larger corvids, besides raptors, we had crows and ravens, and we have a nestling crow that injured its wing, hopefully. Now he'll be released back once he's done. We hope so. Okay. Uh, it seems like his wing is healing fine. We'd love to bring him back. Crows are very big family birds. We'd love to bring him back to his nest Family's site. Family's wondering what's going on, right? Right, yeah. and they, they don't like it. Um, in fact, our crow... They're loud, too. They are loud. Yeah. Our crow that we have was actually robbed from his nest by a hawk. Wow. And the family pursued him until the hawk dropped him, but by that time his injuries were too grave oh. and there was no way he was going to be released. If you did release some, uh, a bird that has uh, been rehabilitating for a fairly long period of time, would they actually, would they have the, the sense to, to go back to their old stomping grounds? Would they be able to kind of reconnect with their family, for lack of a better expression? We do try to release them where they're found, uh, especially adults, because many times there is a mate. Uh, raptors will mate for life, mourn for a moment, most of them, and if they lose a mate, they will take another one. But an adult, we do bring them back to the same territory whenever possible. Young birds, it sort of you know, depends. You know, if it's migration time and this bird is a migratory bird, we might release them a little further down south in the state, give them a head start. But basically, we do try to put them back in their territory. Breathing? Is he breathing through his mouth now? She is. She's probably just a little bit warm. Okay. The lights, probably. So, right. But let's take a break and come back. Do you okay. want to give out? Uh, do you want to give out a website for Horizon Wings? Certainly. It is www.horizonwings.org. Org. All right. Mary Beth Kayser, she's the owner of Horizon Wings. We'll take a break and come back. I'm Sean Murphy. This is For the Record. Stay with us. Welcome back to For the Record. I'm Sean Murphy. My guest is Mary Beth Kayser, owner of Horizon Wings. And in the first segment, you met Sprite. Sprite's, uh, you know, too diva for us to be in the whole show. So <laughs> she went back to her dressing room. Uh, but we still got a lot more to get to. You know, one of the things I found interesting is um, the relationship you have with and, and all the the, the bird sanctuaries and the rehab facilities and places like yours, Horizon Wings, the the interactivity and the and the uh, relationship that you have with each other, where it might be appropriate for someone to come to yours from another place or vice versa, depending on the bird, depending on the situation, the mm -hmm. rehab status, and talk about that a right. little bit. Right, it's really important for wildlife rehabbers to network. Uh, it helps if you have people who can help transport. A lot of people's uh, deal with one specific animal, but it's really important. We're all of the same mindset. We all have the same goals. We want to care for these animals, get them back out in the wild, educational facilities, we want to spread the word on how to prevent injuries and take care of our environment. So we try to network with everybody throughout the state. Uh, many of our birds actually act as foster parents for young of their own kind, and some facilities may not have a foster parent available. Horizon Wings has quite a few foster parents, as do a few other places in the state. And if a rehabber comes across a baby raptor that needs to go in with an adult of its own kind, quite often we'll get a phone call and we'll try to take that bird in. But it's very important to support each other. Uh, let's talk about some of the, uh, the big mistakes that people make, uh, especially when it comes to handling wild animals, birds. And, and the, the really big mistake they make of just kind of showing up and dropping stuff off and, and the not so smart things they do. Talk about that. Right. It does happen. People, I find, always have good intentions. Right. That's the key. But they don't always know. Uh, 
placing baby bird's nests on your back door in hopes that you'll get it when you come home and the neighborhood cat finds it first. Yeah. We've had animals die of heat stroke because people have put them in mailboxes. That's an oven, you know, in it the is. summer. You and know? people have good intentions, but they, you know, don't stop and think it through sometimes, unfortunately. Or people who pick up baby raccoons or fox that are rabies vectors and they let their children pet them and cuddle them and oh, the neighbors so come cute. over. So right. Cute. But that's exposure. And if you don't handle that that animal with gloves or a towel and put it where nobody can touch it. When you expose it to humans, then unfortunately, because these animals can and quite often do carry rabies, that young animal is going to have to be euthanized. Yeah. So the best thing to do, find a wildlife rehabilitator, um, Connecticut CWRA, Connecticut Wildlife Rehabilitator Association. They have lists of wildlife rehabbers who do all sorts of animals all over the state. The Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection has a list of wildlife rehabilitators. Many local vets even have it. So before you handle that animal, call, make sure it needs to be. Um, we get animals that we call kidnapped. People do it with fawns, people do it with little owls. Fawns, deer have their young and they have no scent. They hide them in a nest. And While they they're go, off, they, they go off and Right. They only forage. go back twice a day to nurse them. People find the baby deer, they pick it up. They think it's abandoned. Right, and bring not. it home. Yeah. Exactly. Young yeah. owls branch very early. They're clumsy. They fall down. Parents care for them on ground or lower branches. And people kidnap the baby. Seeing it on the ground, they automatically think, oh, it needs care. But that's not the case. So always before you pick up a baby animal unless you 100 percent know it's injured call a wildlife rehabilitator and ask does it really need to be rescued even like a bird's nest if you don't see the mama there then you just assume some people just assume that the uh, it was abandoned but the, that's not necessarily the case nope. yeah and the fledglings on the ground pick them up put them up in a branch it's an old wise tale that a bird is going to smell you on its baby or any animal true, huh? and reject you. Birds don't have a great sense of smell, most of them. And all they want is their baby back. And when you touch that fawn that you see in the wild, you're actually endangering them because now he smells like a human. And where humans are, there's usually a food source. So that's gonna lead some predator yeah. to that young fawn. Yeah, so. So, so, you know, maybe it's best to not necessarily, again, it's the problem is it's the good intentions with not, know, with not having the knowledge of knowing what to properly do. Right, afterward. exactly. And that's why, unless you know it's injured, or unless you're 100% sure it's an orphan, leave the baby there, call a wildlife rehabilitator, explain the situation, and let them help you out. What if you do end up touching an animal and, and not realizing? What, what should you, is, is simply washing your hands after not good enough, or what, what do you do? Well, if you touch an animal that could be a rabies vector, not just a rabies vector, but they can carry internal and external parasites. Yeah, you should always, always wash well after. Yeah. But if you have to pick up any little creature, use gloves, wrap it up in a towel, protect yourself and protect it. Because if that fawn smells like you or that baby bunny smells like you, then the predators yeah. are gonna be alerted to that smell. Um, how's Horizon Wings uh, funded? We are a 501c3. We are funded through donations. Um, we ask a fee for our educational programs, and all this goes to help care for the birds. Uh, so private donations, right. uh, things like uh, you have a calendar coming out. Talk about that. Right. We will have a calendar coming out in September, September, October, and we ask for a donation for that calendar. It's a $20 donation. And the calendar features all the birds of Horizon Wings and some of our rehab Sprite birds. Gonna also. Be in that Sprite is going to be in there. Sprite is going to be in there. She'll probably be the winter shot this okay. year, we're guessing. Oh, you got a snow shot, huh? We're, yes, yeah. we try to take um, pictures. We have a couple great photographers, Jeannie and Colleen. They take these pictures uh, and uh, they'll actually take the birds and they'll bring them to certain places where they have beautiful backdrops and take pictures of them. How can people get that calendar? So they can go to our website. They can order it right off the website. And that's probably the easiest way to do it. Um, you mentioned that all the, the birds that are in your facility are basically from this 
area, this region. So they, uh, they're birds that can handle the winter, I take it too, correct? Right, a lot of the birds handle the winter well. Many of them migrate, the little sawwet does. Some of the bigger birds, like the great horned owls and some of the owls stick around, some red tails will stick around. Because they're larger, they have a more varied prey base. So the smaller birds, like the broad wing hawk, they'll make a great migration and they go down to South and Central America, wow. as well as peregrine falcons. That's a long way down. Huh? Right, and yeah. birds migrate, they don't migrate just because it's cold up here, they migrate to follow their food source. Right. The little kestrels, American kestrel, a small falcon, they eat a lot of bugs, crickets, grasshoppers. And they're not around in the winter. Right, yeah. and they're not gonna find them in the winter, so they migrate to follow their food source. So what's going on at Horizon Wings in the, in the dead of winter? as opposed to the summer. Obviously there's activity, there's still birds that are that are around, so what's the difference? We still do programs okay. during, the, during the winter. Um, we tend to see more owls during the winter or at the end of fall, in the fall, young birds that are migrating and just aren't doing well on their migration. So we still do the rehabilitation, we still do the programming, and we still have about 18 birds that we have to go out and care for daily. How often uh, do you I guess it depends on their rehabilitation status, but how often are you releasing birds back into the wild? As often as possible. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> we have a pretty good success rate, um, usually between 60 and 75 percent. It depends on the injury and the illness that the animal comes in with. But most of our releases are probably throughout the summer and fall because that's when you see most of the birds. Um, when you talk about educational programs, it's not, is it simply people visiting your facility and learning that way? Or you mentioned before about going out to other places. Do you go to schools? Do you have field trips that come in? How does that work? Both. We do have um, field trips come in. We do have people tour by appointment. Mm -hmm. We have two major fundraisers a year, uh, our Earth Day event in April where we open up and give aviary tours. We have raffles, we have an education station where kids can dissect an owl pellet, and we do that in the fall. We have an owl prowl where people are guaranteed to see five species of owls native to Connecticut because we set up stations where they can see the owls. And again, we have an education station where children can learn about the owls. We have kids' crafts. So we do that, and then we go out weekly on programs we probably have anywhere between three and five programs a week sometimes more yeah. it depends on the season right right um you, you have some event coming up in october too is that another big event for we you we do that's our owl prowl and okay. i want to say it's on the 19th but that will be on our website mm -hmm. and we're open from 6 to eight thirty. tell people dress appropriate for the weather it's always a little chilly bring a flashlight we offer hot beverages and, like I said, an education station, kids craft, all owl related. How have, uh, as time has gone on since you've been open, have you uh, expanded, advanced? What's the next step for you? Can you like expand land-wise or? Um, land-wise, we're pretty well set. We're on about four and a quarter acres out in Ashford, and. We're pretty well set as far as not taking in any more educational ambassadors because we have a pretty good you're covering um, all the yeah, bases we're pretty where you're well varied on on what we have so we would like to build up probably um, our donation base we'd like to build up some more educational programs get the word out there that we're available for education programs our bald eagle is now ready for programs so um, he's ready for prime time is what he's you're ready for yeah. prime time and uh, we hope to encourage people to give us a call and meet ATCA, the bald eagle. All right. Let's take one more break and come right back. I'm Sean Murphy. For, uh, this is for the record. Stay with us. So that is our show for today. Mary Beth uh, Kayser, I'll have you give out the website for Horizon Wings one more time. Sure. www.horizonwings.org. What's on the website for everybody to see? The website has our public educational programs. We do many private schools and such, but the public events are out there. It lists our educational birds. You'll see pictures of them. You'll see uh, our want list, things that we, we need for the facility. And we also have our program descriptions on the website. All right. We'd like to thank Sprite the Isle for being on the first segment with us. And also Mary Beth Kayser, the owner of Horizon Wings. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you for having us. My That's pleasure. our show. You can see this and many other shows on our YouTube sites. I'm Sean Murphy. We will see you next time. Take care.